Darlington loves playing basketball, but even though his school has a basketball court, he'd rather play at other schools because his school's court is dangerous. Welcome to the Buchanan Seventh-day Adventist School in Liberia. Today is color day. Students leave their uniforms at home and wear colorful outfits as they happily offer their lunch money to raise funds for a school project. This year, their goal is to raise enough money for a new bulletin board in the school's elementary area. Although Darlington came in full uniform today, he still contributed to the project. With over 600 students ready to help, the bulletin board is sure to be built. Darlington, though, longs for something more than just a bulletin board. He's a hardworking grade 12 student who hopes to study international peace and conflict resolution someday. While he studies hard and has hopes for the future, he still has an interest in things like playing basketball. Unfortunately, his school's basketball court is not very safe to play on. It is a gravel, it is not a level ground. It hurts many people. So when anyone will volunteer that said to construct a new basketball court, then we will refer ourselves there and play basketball. The school has plans for a recreational area, which includes both basketball and volleyball courts. Along with this are plans to renovate a science laboratory and an unfinished auditorium to be used as a multi-purpose space. During big events like graduation, the school spends a lot of money to rent other auditoriums because they don't have a place of their own. With new chairs, the necessary equipment, and a few finishing touches, the school could have a functional auditorium, making it the biggest auditorium in Buchanan. It will alleviate most of the problem we have with congestion, with congestion, to have a greater impact for our students, where we have an able environment, where we can assemble freely together as a school. More and more parents choose to send their children to the Seventh-day Adventist School in Buchanan because of the high quality education they provide and the good values they teach. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help construct a new recreational area, a science laboratory, and an auditorium here. Please pray for the Buchanan Seventh-day Adventist School in Liberia as they minister to more students, provide quality education, and teach them about the love of God. Thank you for supporting the 13th Sabbath offering. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. New week, closer to the end of the year, of our year. Today's lesson is going to be on something that I'm sure the majority of you haven't been familiar with or heard about. And it's not that it is not out there, it's just not regularly taught, which is kind of sad. These are, I'm going to be talking about the festivals that God set. You know, we know about camp meetings in our church. And we, you know, have the dates set by whoever, somebody at the conference, I'm sure, that sets the dates. Well, God sent appointed dates for us, too. And his calendar is actually based off of the moon because we can't change the moon. He set it up how he wanted it. And I hope that with this study, you get to see it in a new way that you have never heard about or knew about. And maybe it'll just spark a little bit of interest for you. All right. We're gonna start off with prayer first because Trust me, I'm not worthy to teach God's words. All I am is a tool, and I'm praying that he will do all the teaching. So close your eyes 
picture him in your mind and please pray with me that he comes here and he is with you for you to hear and understand him with me for me to say it correctly to know what I'm supposed to do because I don't know otherwise so picture him in your mind dear Heavenly Father Jehovah God dear sweet Jesus my our creator and savior you created us and then came back to save us oh God, amen to that and then gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to teach us and guides and comforts us thank you for being our God you're an awesome awesome God and I thank you for all of your love that you so generously bestow upon me and others Lord God I truly want to be able to walk through those golden gates, the pearly gates, those beautiful gates of your city, and know that I'm safe for eternity with you. And Lord, I'm trying to give your words to your people on your day. Help me, Lord. Help me because I'm useless on my own. Bless everyone who is hearing, whether it's today or tomorrow, or next month or next year or whenever bless them with hearing and insight and knowledge that they can follow this thank you for giving me anthony to work with me on this and thank you for giving me a daughter-in-law who understands the technology because it's way over my head i'm a pen and pencil person thank you for loving us lord thank you for giving us eternity in Jesus' name we pray. We love you. Amen. Okay. To start off with this study, <clears throat> this study is going to be different than the book of Revelation. This study is going to be on God's festivals, his feast days. The ones that is, is almost here on us now is the Day of Atonement. And we will get to it, but I'm not going to start with the Day of Atonement. In the Hebrew word, Yom, Y-O-M, means day, and Kippur means mercy seat. The mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant, and you have seen it, is that box with the angels over it, and they had the wings, each had one wing touching the area in between the angels was known as the mercy seat because it's sitting on the top of the box where the ten commandments are inside and god sits there giving us mercy because we have broken those ten commandments <coughs> excuse me um let's see He's covering it. So the Ark of the Covenant means to cover, to cover our sins, <coughs> to cover the Ten Commandments. On this one day, I guess I did start off with it, the high priest is going in before God to ask for mercy cleansing of the people and all the lands, all of their collective sins from the past year. Now, we're supposed to pray for our sins to be removed. We're supposed to ask as individuals for our sins to be removed. And we're not just, well, <coughs> we knew we got mad at our brother and yelled and screamed and hollered and cussed and ran and raped. Yeah, well, you're supposed to say, God, I am asking for mercy and erasing of that sin when I lost my temper and yelled and screamed and ran and raved at my brother. Because what you're trying to do is show God that you are paying attention to the way you're acting and you don't like it and you want to be stronger and you want to be more like him. You don't just say, forgive me my sins. It's generic, you know, like, no. Well, when the Day of Atonement comes, there's going to be sins that you forgot about. And this makes the generic covering of all the sins that you didn't remember because if you remember you're supposed to bring them up in prayer just remember there is no washing away of sins once you have sinned and even worse when you trespass which means you intentionally sinned 
This sin remains until the final judgment when all the sins will be destroyed. Did you hear me? The sins remain. There's no washing away. I've heard it all my life. Wash away sins. No, they're covered with God's blood. With Jesus' blood, so God doesn't see them. But they're there. They are still there. Like this table is here. I can paint it and stuff, but it's still there. Well, you don't wash away sins. You cover them with Jesus' blood. Our sins... That's the reason we're asking for Jesus' blood to cover our sins, so that when Jehovah God looks at us, he sees his beautiful son's blood instead of our filthiness. This is the most special of all of the seven fest feasts, festivals. I say feast. During the, the feast times, you are, you are to do what he says to show him you're paying attention to what he gave us. He gave us a set of rules. And these rules are mostly in Leviticus chapter 23 on the feast. Now, they're mentioned all through the Bible. Even Jesus is the last one to attend. It's even talked about in the, in the Bible before he was crucified. Let me go back and give you more information of the feast days and what God says about them. This is going to be a quick ride, so grab paper and pencil, and try to remember what you're going to hear. I truly believe it's important. I wouldn't be spending my time telling you this. I truly believe we are supposed to remember his appointed times, God's appointed times. To start with, remember, God started time of life here on this world by working. What was the first week here on earth? God worked. He believes in working. He worked for six days, and then he said, I'm done at the end of the sixth day, and the seventh day he made it hollowed, holy, special and set it apart. That was the first week. Work is very important part of God's plan. The seventh day was the intermission from the work week. So people forget. You are supposed to work. It says it over and over again. It says you should not even eat if you don't work. <coughs> so the work week is very important, and people don't talk about it. But we are to go back to work after the intermission, or known as the Sabbath. God also likes to have fun, just like us. Remember, we are made in God's image. He likes fun. He likes breaks. God set out seven times, appointed times of in the year, to be extra time to either be off work or time to come together and talk about Him. He's present. He wants us to remember him. These extra special times started when he removed the Hebrews and the mixed race from Egypt. Oh, that's when it started. Listen to this. That time a, was a new beginning, so God said. This will be your new year. I want you to pay attention. New year. Look up Exodus 12, 1 and 2. And not a Jewish New Year. And I will make that point later on. So the New Year was for all the people following God. We think of it as about, we think it was about the middle of March when it came to be. We don't know for an actual fact. Then in Exodus 12, 3 through 51, he talks about it all the way through. God said that the first of the, these feasts, he put in motion. Just look at a few of the verses to let's see what they say. Exodus 12, 14. Exodus 12, 17. Exodus 12, 24. Exodus 12, 
25. Exodus 12, 49. Keep this first feast day, the Passover, generation after generation, forever. Wow, forever. Notice God says, yes, God says that this is a law, an ordinance, a statute. Remember, statute means law. Forever. Generation after generation, forever. Now, this Passover had a total of three parts. Let's break them down. The first was Passover, the lamb dies. This is a pet lamb from the very first one that you brought into your home. The kids played with it. It's soft, it's fuzzy, it's loving. Oh, it's just wonderful. It's not something out in the field. That's not what the Bible says. It says, after you purchased this, purchased this lamb that's perfect, you brought it in and it's part of your family. Uh, <clears throat> this was the Passover lamb. And when he died four days later, by the hand of the father of the household, his blood was to cover the doorpost so that the sinner isn't seen. The sinner isn't seen, but the blood is seen. Now the reason for is the angel of death is going to pass through the lamb. And if he sees the lamb's blood, he won't enter that building. It says, even your animals, the firstborn will die, as well as people's firstborn, unless the lamb's blood was on the door. So you put it over the barn. You put it over your house. If you saw street people and you offered and they came into your house, then they were safe too. Because the angel of death saw the blood from the lamb and passed over. Next, second part, was the unleavened bread, no yeast. God says you were to make bread. Think of a flour tortilla or corn tortilla. But it couldn't have yeast in it, no yeast, because yeast meant sin in this occasion. Jesus is known as the bread of life. And remember, he died here on earth during the Passover week. Well, he's known as the Lamb of God, and so his blood shed so that we could pass over, you know, and not die. But he's the bread of life. What did he do on, he died on Friday. What did he do on Saturday? He laid in his grave. The bread did not rise. The bread of life did not rise on that sabbath day and part three he is known as the first fruit of god and this day is called the first fruit and jesus being the first fruit of god raised on the third day now this is three of the seven appointed times of feasts so see it's real easy to get into this the day of Pentecost was 50 days after the resurrection, but it didn't start then. It started 1,500 years before. 50 days after the people going through the Red Sea. Oh, we're going back to the Red Sea and the people. People coming through the Red Sea. The people were told to go to Mount Sinai and make camp. Take a guess. How many days do you think it took them to get there? 50 days. Well, it actually was 47 because they were there three days when God spoke the Ten Commandments to them. That was Pentecost. They always would remember Passover. They passed through the, the sea. They, the angel of death passed over their house. And then Pentecost was at the mountain when they heard the voice of God speaking directly to them. Wow. So they always kept these. 1,500 years they kept them and Jesus was crucified. So when they said the Pentecost was remembered, remember that it, 
the Pentecost happened 50 days after his crucifixion. But he walked on earth. Remember, he was erected on Sunday. He God sent him back here on earth, and he ate and walked and talked and taught, taught people about resurrection for 40 days, and then he resurrected. Look at it. Acts 1. It tells you, Acts 1.1, 1, 1, it tells you about his resurrection. And then the Pentecost came 10 days after he rose, 50 days after his crucifixion. All right. Um, a few days, uh, I'm not sure where I'm at anyway. A few days later, God told Moses to go up on the mountain. And God gave the Ten Commandments written with his own finger in stone to him to the people, to all of us. The people were keeping this feast day. All four of these feast days, there's four of them, the Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruit, and Pentecost. He kept them all. Now, if we go to Leviticus 23, 1 through 44, it tells about this. Notice in Leviticus 23, 14, again, it says forever. We read it all those times in in Exodus. Now it's saying in Leviticus, keep this forever. Please, now remember, and I know there's people out there that says, no, they were nailed to the cross. The, the shedding of blood was nailed to the cross. There was no more blood because he was the, the perfect lamb. But remembering it and teaching it to your generation to your children, generation after generation forever, was not nailed to the cross. Paul even talks about it years after Jesus died. These feasts are to be remembered. And remember, in Luke, I believe it is uh, 22, 15 or 16, somewhere in there where it says that the the that Passover meal he has longed to have and that it would not be completed till it's completed in paradise with him again forever till we get to heaven. Please remember when it says statue, it means law. Now in the beginning of the fall of the year is the feast of the trumpets. Now, the spring of the year was the Passover. It was the new year. God said that with his own mouth. And then we go into uh, Pentecost. But during the heart of the summer, nothing happens. There is nothing. Now comes September in the fall of the year, and we have the Feast of the Trumpets. Always remember throughout the whole Bible, when trumpets blow, this is a warning sign. It's always referring to warning signs. Pay attention. It says in Leviticus 23, 24, in the seventh month, now let's look at this, huh? March, April, May, June, July, August, September. <sighs> the fall of the year, September. All right, it says in Leviticus 23, 24, in the seventh month, there will be the blowing of trumpets for 10 days. This is the fifth of the feast days. But on the 10th day, blowing for 10 days it shall be the day of atonement which we started with remember notice the name atonement at a t one o n e men m e n with a cross we call it t at the end atonement all through the bible it says jesus is our atonement and this is the atonement. Now listen to this. Of all of these seven feasts appointed times, one you don't eat at all. And you can have liquid, but no food for 24 hours. And that's the day of atonement. You're supposed to fast because you are begging God to please forgive you for all the sins you forgot to ask forgiveness for. You're asking for strength not to sin anymore in the next year because you want to be saved. <coughs> so at one with men, Jesus is at one with men and he is the atonement. Now, I do believe Jesus was born then. 
but that isn't being able to be proof. <laughs> we know it was not December 25th, and we know how December 25th got named. Jesus is our atonement, and Jesus died in the spring of the year during the Passover at 33 and a half years of age. <coughs> so go back a half year, and that will take you to the time of the atonement. So I feel Jesus was born during this time, or better yet, on this day. Also, it would be a be it would be a warning for, let me try that again. It would be warm at the time of his birth when the shepherds were in the field taking care of their flock when the angels came and announced his birth. Think about that. Now in Leviticus 23, 27, it says, Day of Atonement. Look at it. And then it says in 20, Leviticus 23, 31, back to forever. Wow. This is the sixth feast day, though you don't eat for 24 hours. Now the seventh feast day, this appointed time, is five days after the Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement is known as Yom, meaning day, Kippur meaning to cover the Day of Atonement. Now, this last feast is the Feast of Tabernacles. This feast is also a harvest feast. Now, let me tell you a little story here. I know I probably wrote this in here. I know me. But we didn't always have Thanksgiving. Abraham Lincoln was reading in the Bible, and he saw where the Feast of Tabernacle was a glorious, like, party of food and celebration, praising God for all of this wonderful harvest that he has bestowed upon everyone, and that everyone was supposed to get together and share their bounties, because I'm sure somebody raises better Oh, strawberries than the next person, but somebody raises better oats or wheat than that. So they were to share it, and they were supposed to have a thanksgiving, thanking God. Abraham Lincoln was the one who originally says, this country needs to thank God for all of its many blessings and bountiful and he came up with Thanksgiving. Now, it wasn't declared a holiday, legal holiday, until many years later. But still, it was a time when we're supposed to just say, we sincerely thank you for being so generous to us. I, <clears throat> yeah, here I wrote it. I read that Abraham Lincoln ordered Thanksgiving Day for the United States to thank God for all of the blessings that God had bestowed on this country after reading about this feast in the Bible. This feast was the last one Jesus went to before he died during a Passover week. This feast is in the fall of the year. Is it, this feast is in October after the harvest. When I say October, it is sometimes in September because it's, again, by the full moon. But it's always close to the end of September, which, guess what? It's happening at the end of September this year or the first part of October. Leviticus 23, 41. Now, this year, the Day of Atonement will be September 28, 2020. Think about God with an extra special hug. Do something for him or for others. Let him know that you're thinking of him and remembering him. Ellen White has said much about the appointed days of the festivals. Here are just three little quotes that I have wrote down. There was a lot more. <clears throat> Ellen White quoted this. How well would it be for people of God 
at the present time, when she wrote this, it's much worse now. She would not believe the world today. At the present time, to have a Feast of Tabernacle, that joyous Thanksgiving, this joyous commotion, com <clears throat> this joyous time to come together, all of us being blessed by God and giving God the blessings. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 540. Ellen White didn't say that we are to appoint our own time, but that camp meetings should be held at the appointed time. God pointed the time. If the children of Israel needed the benefits of these holy convocations in their day, how much more do we need them in these last days? in this parallelous conflict that is going on. Testimonies, Volume 6, page 39 and 40. Think about it, guys. Think about how good you feel showing God, oh, I see, this makes you happy. You know, I used to say, it would be nice for somebody to remember your birthday and, and do a celebration a month after your birthday because they just remembered it. But wouldn't it be better to do it on your birthday? So let's remember these. And it's right there in the Bible where you can hunt them up. But remember this one, the uh, Day of Atonement, is September the 28th. Five days later, early in October, will be a week celebration of remembering God and remembering what he did for the people when he brought them from the wilderness, from Egypt through the wilderness to where we sit today with this technology. He loves us so much. Shouldn't we say that we love him with deeds as well as our mouth? Now, Anthony, I know, has a lot to add to this. And I thank Anthony so much for his help and his guidance. I'm asking you to pay attention and tell others so that they will also know this information because we're supposed to spread it out. Remember the three angels' message? We are to spread it out once we hear it. Thank you, and you have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week. Happy Sabbath. Bye-bye.